a few minutes at 630. We wanted to just thank you for joining. Thank you for your patience and we'll be getting started shortly. Okay, it's 630. So again, I want to say good evening to everyone. Thank you very much for joining us for uh, the District Department of Transportation um, for this virtual meeting on the rehabilitation of Eastern Avenue Northeast, um, which extends from New Hampshire Avenue Northeast to Whittier Street Northwest. We are very pleased to be in front of you again for another public meeting. We have held two prior public meetings for this project, one in 2016 and one in 2017. Um, the project was then put on hold for a while as we added several important uh, features. These additional improvements were based on comments from the community um, that address safety concerns and changes to DDOT's design manual. Um, some of these features include improved street lights, a new traffic signal at Sligo Mill Road, and also additional drainage improvements. Um, next slide, please. So tonight, in addition to introducing, introducing the project team to you, um, we will also be discussing project background and deficiencies along the corridor, objectives of the project, roadway corridor and intersection improvements, retaining wall rehabilitation, drainage improvements, landscaping, the phasing for construction, detours, the schedule and stakeholder feedback. And then at the end, we will hold a Q&A. Next slide, please. So I'd like to introduce you to the, introduce you to the project team. Um, we have Zara from, D, uh, from DDOT, rather, I'll just name everyone. We have Zara Doriz. Um, Yvonne Thelwell, Tess Aim, and Alberta Paul, and also Christian Pinheiro. From the Century Engineering team, we have Vian Tai, Neil Robinson. And then from TVNA, we have me, Stacey Hemby, and my TVNA team, and we provide outreach support. 
I'm about to turn it over officially um, to begin the presentation, but just before I do that, um, please allow me a few moments to go through some meeting logistics with you. First, um, I have to let you know that the meeting as shown on the slide is being recorded and streamed also on DDOT's Facebook page. Um, while the team is doing the presentation, everyone's mic is muted and that's just to avoid background noise so that we can uh, clearly hear the presenters. Um, if you have a question or a comment, there are a few ways to do this. The first option is to use the Q&A feature. You may also raise your hand to let us know that you have a question. Um, both of these options can be found at the bottom right hand corner of your screen. If you don't see them immediately, uh, there is uh, three dots that if you press on, um, select those three dots, you should then be able to see the Q&A option as well as the raise hand option. If you are dialing in, pressing star three on your phone's keypad um, will serve as a hand raise. We will do our very best to answer all questions in the order in which they are received at the end. And the very last thing I promise is we ask that you complete a Title VI form for us, just a few questions, and we'll direct you to that form at the end of the presentation. So thank you very much for your patience through uh, the logistics, and I'll now turn it over to Yvonne. Thank you very much, Stacy. So I just want to start out first just by giving you a little overview of the project. So the project, as we mentioned, it goes, it's on Eastern Avenue from Whittier Street to the north, and it goes to New Hampshire Avenue to the south. So some of this probably isn't going to be surprised to you. I'm just going to kind of give an overview of some of the quarter deficiencies that we've had and that we're addressing in this project. There are some problems with the geometrics. There's some inadequate lane transitions. There's some deteriorating pavement and curbs. As far as traffic operations, there have been complaints of high speeds, improper lane use, and not having left turn lanes in some of the um, busiest intersections. As far as the pedestrian and bicycle facilities and operations, there have been some unsafe pedestrian crossings. There's limited sight distance, particularly at Sligo Mill Road. There are no sidewalks or pedestrians access to bus stops. So no sidewalks such as on the uh, northbound side of the street. And there's been non-compliant pedestrian curb ramps. As far as traffic control devices, we have deteriorated signs and sign clutter, and there's some improper placement of some of these signs. There's been some poor lane delineations. It's kind of hard to see some of the markings that are currently there. There's an adequate lane roadway lighting. Some of the retaining walls are tilting and crumbling. There's been some complaints of flooding, and that's due to damage and clogged inlets. There's been a reduced capacity of storm drain pipes, and there's no stormwater management facilities on the project corridor. And then just as some visual appeal, that's always nice to have. As long as we're doing the project, we wanna provide healthy trees, and there's been some improper tree pruning and maintenance. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Tess, who's the project manager. He's going to discuss some of the project objectives that are to address some of these deficiencies. Tess, it's all yours. Thank you, Ivan. I'll just brief on the project objectives. Basically, the project objective is to increase multimodal safety and accessibility to improve the corridor appearance and functionality. By multimodal, uh, we mean uh, motorist safety, pedestrian, and bicycle safety. So to improve the roadway safety, we'll be reconstructing uh, all deteriorated roadway infrastructures. We we'll upgrade traffic signals and reduce the speeding, improve the storm drainage system. And to increase pedestrian safety, we'll add new sidewalk, improve pavement marking and signage, and reconstruct non-ADA compliant features. To increase the bicycle, uh, the bicycle safety, We'll add a bike lane and improve pavement markings. When it comes to corridor appearance and functionality, we'll add a new granite curbs, upgrade street lights, and add biotension facilities and trees. Just to give you general project improvements, we'll have full depth pavement reconstruction for the entire project from Wheater Street Northwest to New Hemisphere Avenue Northeast. We'll construct 1,500 feet of new six feet sidewalk with six feet grass buffer in the northbound direction. 
we'll introduce bike lane and the new eight feet shared use bus where we have a limited right way. We'll construct new granite curves. We'll have modification on two traffic signal intersections. Uh, we'll add an additional one. We'll improve street lights, as I mentioned, for the entire lanes. We'll have major storm drainage system improvements. Those are the major improvements. Just to give you on the overview on the plan, our project begins from Wheater Street Northwest, and we have, as you see, the gray color. That means we will have a full depth reconstruction, which is for the entire project. For the southbound direction, we'll have a shared use lane, while in the northbound direction, we'll have a dedicated bike lane and through lane. We have moved the bus stop near the intersection in North Capital Street, Northwest. We'll have also intersection just before we reach the North Capital Street for the northbound traffic too. Next slide, please. As you see, this is the bus pad for the northbound traffic. So the shared use lane continues south for the south bound, while we have a dedicated bike lane from Kansas Avenue to mid block for northbound traffic. And then it changes to a shared use bus. That's eight feet uh, uh, until uh, uh, North Capital intersection. This is due to limited right of way. So, but it will be enough for pedestrians and sidewalks. The sidewalk is stops right here. And this is the new sidewalk that we have in the north side for pedestrians from Sligo Mill Road until uh, mid block uh, past it, uh, before we reach North Capital intersection. We are keeping the parking lane on the west side. We'll have some traffic signal intersection in Kansas Avenue Northeast. We're keeping the bus bus stops where they were. We have a dedicated uh, bike lane from 5th Street to 4th Avenue, from 5th Avenue to 4th Avenue, and then we have shared use bus uh, for this, uh, for northbound traffic until Kansas Avenue. This is to provide a left turn lane for the northbound traffic on Kansas Avenue intersection. Next slide, please. This is a Sligo Middle Road intersection where we have uh, intersection configuration change. We have moved the bus stop near the intersection for north for the southbound traffic. We have, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have the entire project uh, having uh, full depth re pavement reconstruction. We have uh, more changes, but my colleagues will go through it. I know our project ends in New Hemisphere Avenue Northeast intersection. We have again here traffic signal modification. This is just to give you a general uh, overview, but my colleague Neil will go in detail. Please, Neil. Thank you, Jeff. Good evening, everyone. Um, as you can see, the overwhelming focus for the project is really about safety improvements. And by safety improvements, we're talking about roadway safety, traffic operations and safety, roadside safety features, and safety for pedestrians and cyclists. And once all of these um, really come together and coalesce, we're looking at safety for the neighborhood as a whole. So um, with respect to roadway safety improvements, currently, the, the roadway is classified as a minor arterial roadway. And between Sligo Mill Road and Kansas Avenue, um, as you're heading northbound, it's really a de facto two lanes of traffic. And that's not the original intent of the road. Um, the roadway should be one lane in each direction with parking on the south side. And so this project will revert the roadway to its originally intended um, lane use. 
And by doing that, we'll also be able to introduce bike lanes and have wide lanes for shared use um, between um, vehicles and cyclists as well. Also at multiple intersections, we'll have um, bump outs or curb extensions as we call them. And that will serve to reduce speeds um, along the corridor. And it, it really is an effective traffic calming measure. And overall, we really intend to bring the speeds back down to the posted speed limits or as close to the posted speed limits as we can. And that's 25 miles per hour. And the ultimate goal is to have improved safety for all road users. As far as traffic operations are concerned, I mentioned bump outs um, before. And the bump outs not only serve to reduce um, the vehicular speeds, but what they do is um, they provide a shorter crossing distance for pedestrians. Um, for persons who are, are familiar with um, the intersection at Sligo Mill Road, um, there is a crest vertical curve at that intersection, and there are significant sight distance issues. So for pedestrians trying to cross Eastern Avenue at that location, it's difficult for motorists to see them. So um, with the introduction of the curb bump outs, what that does is it places the pedestrians who intend to cross um, closer to the roadway, making them more visible. And as I mentioned before, it also reduces the ped crossing distance. And we'll buttress all of this um, roadway improvement with um, pavement marking. So we're looking at high installing high visibility continental style pavement markings, all of which um, should point the motorist to an area where pedestrians are likely to enter the roadway. And again, um, we're looking at improved safety for, for all road users and especially vulnerable road users as well. Roadside improvements, um, we, um, Tess mentioned earlier, um, the introduction of sidewalks along the, the northern side of the roadway and we'll also be rehabilitating sidewalks, um, the existing sidewalks. And with, with that um, aspect of the project, we'll also be relocating um, bus stops and just making sure that there's accessibility for transit riders who, who need to access um, the buses along the route. And so all these upgrades will include lighting as well um, as a part of the roadside improvements. Um, we'll also be looking at deteriorating walls, um, retaining walls, crumbling walls, as was mentioned earlier. And these are some of the roadside improvements that are needed, um, both for safety and also to improve the look and feel of the corridor. As far as pedestrians and bicyclists um, are concerned, we are adding bicycle facilities to the roadway. And in the northbound direction, we'll be adding bike lanes, a dedicated bike lanes to travel alongside, safely alongside the vehicles on the roadway. On the, on the southbound direction, we'll have extra wide lanes marked with showers to indicate to motorists that they ought to share the road with cyclists. So throughout the, the overall improvement project, we're not just focusing on one set of road users, um, but we're focusing on motorists, we're focusing on PEDs, we're focusing on cyclists as well. There is also a very, a relatively short segment of, of roadway, about 300 feet south of North Capital, where we will introduce an eight foot wide shared use path. And this path will accommodate um, cyclists and pedestrians um, comfortably. Intersection improvements will also be a major part of this project. Currently, there are two signalized intersections within um, the project limit. So let me start at Kansas Avenue first. At Kansas Avenue, um, we'll be upgrading the signal equipment. Um, we'll be adding a left turn lane in the northbound direction to make that left onto Kansas Avenue. Um, currently, if vehicles intend to turn on Kansas Avenue, it can cause quite a bit of queuing. So even though there is improper lane use, as as we speak, and there are two lanes of traffic going through. Um, once we bring back the roadway to its original and its intended configuration, we'll have one lane going through 
and we're introducing a left turn lane to avoid backups and queuing for northbound vehicles. We'll also be adding um, the high visibility continental pavement markings. Um, we'll be upgrading the intersection signing. Also, the intersection lighting will be upgraded to LED um, fixtures, and we'll have vehicle video detection, which senses the movements along in the left turn lane and then allows the intersection to operate efficiently. At Sligo Mill Road, currently there is no signalized um, intersection there. Um, it's stop controlled from the Sligo Mill Road approaches. So um, this project will also entail the introduction of an interim traffic signal at this location. And we will not be changing the roadway geometrics um, for this installation, but it will be the signal will be installed with the original or the existing geometrics. So there will not be any curb bump outs during this phase of the signal operations. However, we will be introducing a left turn lane um, from southbound Eastern Avenue onto Sligo Mill Road. Um, as we did, uh, as we propose to do with Kansas Avenue, we'll be upgrading the pavement markings, high visibility continental style markings. Um, we'll be adding and upgrading the signing at that intersection. Vehicle video detection will be installed as well. And ultimately, this will be to improve um, the corridor and improve the safety and operations at this location. Um, just a point to note here, we've had two public meetings so far, and this project is not as far along as many would have expected because um, DDOT listened during these public meetings. We heard the concerns of residents, especially from a safety standpoint, and that in part has led to the introduction of this interim signal at Sligo Mill Road. So I know oftentimes um, there is there's anxiety about when the project will be finished, but um, we really want to do it right and balance that with the concerns of the residents. The last signalized intersection in this project is at New Hampshire Avenue, and we will be performing similar upgrades, um, all geared towards pedestrian safety and smooth, efficient operation of vehicles through the intersection. One of the major things that we're doing at this location is that we're upgrading all the existing ramps that are there, all the pedestrian ramps. We're making them ADA compliant. We're also introducing accessible pedestrian signals. That's countdown pedestrian signals and accessible pedestrian signals. So we will be able to effectively um, accommodate um, anyone who is um, wheelchair bound or someone who is visually impaired. So these are some of the considerations that are noteworthy for the improvements at the signalized intersection throughout the corridor. Um, mention was made um, earlier about some of the, the crumbling walls and the tilting retaining walls. And this is a, a major part of the project because they do pose a safety hazard. Um, these walls um, can fall and impact um, pedestrians who are walking along the sidewalk. So um, the decision was made that we needed to rehab um, these retaining walls. And not only from a safety standpoint, but also from a look and feel of the corridor. Um, the focus is not only on the roadway itself, but also on roadside improvements such as these. Now, the drainage is yet another major component that we certainly had to address. Um, we cannot prevent water from getting onto the roadway. So the intent of the, the drainage design on any roadway is to get the water off as quickly as you can and avoid damaging um, the pavement. The existing um, drainage system is really old right now. Um, it's pre-1950s. And once we did our field reconnaissance or field walkthrough, we could see, as you can see in this um, image here, there were a lot of um, clogged inlets, inlets that were deteriorated. And because of that, there was restricted flow. There were areas, particularly in the 
in the sad vertical curve area of Kansas Avenue, where you could see a lot of debris, leaves, and branches and twigs had blocked the inlet. And in speaking with um, residents within that intersection, they told us that flooding was definitely a problem. So we, we have applied the current design standards and to that end, we are installing up to 20 new inlets, all to facilitate um, flow. Um, we're replacing damaged inlets and upsizing inlets as well so that they can accommodate um, a larger flow volume so that the capacity will be increased. Currently, there's no stormwater management facility along the corridor, and we'll be introducing that with the intent of improving the runoff. Um, we'll also have catch basins that will sed um, separate um, sediment from trash, and we'll have bioretention planters that will remove pollutants um, from the runoff. Um, I mentioned earlier the signal at Sligo Mill Road, and that in part contributed to the project not being as far along as we would have loved. Um, similarly, um, we had advanced the project to a much um, later stage in design, but then there was a new design manual, a stormwater, a storm drain design manual that was implemented. And from a standpoint of doing due diligence and just making sure we have the design correct, we actually implemented some of the requirements of this new design manual. And that has also contributed in part to, to where we are with the project. Landscaping improvements, a very important part of this project as well. Um, and unfortunately, sometimes with projects overall, um, this aspect tends to get back burned, but not with this DDOT project. We understand that um, there is that technical aspect of improving the roadway, um, resurfacing the roadway, adding um, new curb and gutter, adding inlets. But um, what sense is it to have really a beautified roadway, but your roadside elements are, are not in good standing? So landscaping is a major part of this project. And from our reconnaissance, we saw where there were dead and dying trees. Um, they were not maintained properly, neither trees or shrubs. Um, there was incorrect pruning to avoid the overhead utility lines. And all of that made for an unsightly corridor. And so this project will um, seek to improve that, improve the overall look and feel in addition to the safety components. And to that end, we'll be replacing dead trees and missing trees. Um, we'll be pruning the trees that are viable just to bring them back to life and put them in a healthy state and we'll also be introducing new trees and plantings. So we get to a point of the project where this really has the greatest impact on residents. It has the greatest impact on the road users as well. And that's a construction um, component. And what we have proposed is completing this project in four major stages or phases. Um, phase one, will involve the full road closure between New Hampshire and Sligo Mill, and we'll implement detours, and I'll talk about that um, later on in the presentation. Um, phase 2A, as we travel north, um, we'll be closing the northbound lanes and maintaining traffic on the southbound, side, southbound lanes and implementing a northbound um, detour. Similarly, as we move farther south, um, farther north, um, between Kansas Avenue and North Capitol Street, um, phase 3A will involve closing the northbound lanes, maintaining traffic flow on the southbound lanes, and implementing a detour for northbound traffic. And then finally, the last segment, um, phase 4, will follow suit as we've done with phases 2 and 3 closing that northbound lane between North Capital and Whittier and maintaining traffic on the southbound and then flipping things so that we can um, complete the rehabilitation of the roadway. Um, the, the overall goals are really to minimize the impacts to all users, all traffic. Um, so whether we're talking vehicles, pedestrians, cyclists, um, the intent we, will be to minimize um, those impacts. Also, we want to maintain flow 
through the, the work area itself. But to the extent that we can't, we will implement detours that I called out earlier. And we want to maintain access to, to residents, the residences. And um, there will be times when the construction will directly impact homeowners, but um, we will continue to coordinate during the construction phase so that these impacts are minimized, as will be the case for nighttime work. It's not desirable for um, nighttime work under any circumstance, but in order to move the project along quickly, oftentimes we gain efficiencies um, working during nighttime hours. And so we will work with the community and um, have nighttime work, but um, with minimal disruptions. And the overall goal again is to maintain the safety of all road users and let us not forget um, the construction workers as well. So for phase one, um, the blue area indicates um, that full roadway closure and the detours that will be implemented will involve um, Sligo Mill Road and Rittenhouse Road for that southbound detour, as you can see by the, the, the blue arrows. And then for the northbound detours, we'll come along Sligo, um, um, New Hampshire Avenue, Rittenhouse Road, Kansas Avenue as well. So these detours, they will be properly signed um, so that even persons who are not familiar with the area will have positive guidance as they get around the, the work area and continue along their journey. Similarly, um, we will be implementing detours for northbound um, traffic when we close a northbound um, segment between Sligo Mill and Kansas, Kansas Avenue. And traffic that's coming from the northern regions along 5th Avenue and 4th Avenue, they will be detoured along Westmoreland Avenue to get around the work area. Um, so, so we have looked at these roadways and we have just looked on the, the roadway width and to see what they can accommodate. And for all instances where we implement detours, we'll ensure that the roadway can accommodate the anticipated traffic um, with minimal disruption to, to residents along those roadways. And as we continue traveling north, it's, it's a similar process. We will close one side of the roadway in order to, to facilitate construction while maintaining traffic, one-way traffic on the other. And phase 2B of this detour between um, Sligo Mill Road and Kansas Avenue um, follows suit as well. And we have the detour traveling along, um, sending motorists along Kansas Avenue. Um, for smaller vehicles, they, they can take Sheridan Avenue to get back to Sligo Mill Road. But also, as an alternate um, detour route, um, traffic will be routed from Kansas to Chillum Place to Peabody to New Hampshire Avenue. So there are options. And again, um, for persons who are unfamiliar with the area, we will ensure that the signing is correct. It is up to standard and it is visible and very intuitive. Heading farther north between Kansas and North Capital, similarly, We'll close one side of the roadway, maintain one-way traffic in the other direction while construction occurs. And then when we get to the second stage of that segment, we will flip things and maintain traffic in the other direction while implementing the detour. And these slides, as I'm, as I'm talking to you and you are from the area, you will have an idea if the street that you live on will be impacted so that when construction starts, um, there'll be some advanced knowledge that there will be a heavier volume of traffic along, along the roadways that you live on. And then lastly, um, the, the, the last segment between North Capital and Whittier, it will follow suit again, where we will close one side of the roadway construct it, and then we will flip it, maintain traffic in the other direction and continue along um, as we've done with the other segments. Um, something that I, I'd love to note as well is that um, as a part of the design process, um, we have recommended detours, we have recommended construction phasing, 
and we we put this as a part of the design package to help guide the contractor as he or she continues with the work but prior to um, the start of construction there will be another public meeting and and the contractor as they've looked over the plans that um, we've developed or design team has developed um, there will be input if there is a different way that the project can be staged that construction can be staged um, then there is some latitude to make changes and that latitude will also involve input from the the community and at the very least it will in, involve informing the the residents the community i'm sorry um, of what the ultimate and then final construction will be so um, with that we've really come to the point where we want to talk schedule um, the Design completion for the corridor project will be um, in July of this year. So that's next month, by the end of July. And then after the design is complete, then there is a process through which um, it goes through and gets prepared for bid. So the construction start really at this point is anticipated to be um, in 2026. And it seems like a far, far way off but it is also dependent on funding. So um, this date is, is certainly subject to change. And there is a website, which um, we'll talk about later on, where you can get project updates as we move forward. But overall, um, the, the project um, has been a challenging one. Um, we have not, the, the project has not advanced as one would anticipate, but it is really because we've slowed things down and we're addressing the, the, the requests and the questions um, from the residents. And I talked about the signal at Sligo Mill. That's one aspect that um, we addressed, which took time. Um, there is a design, um, the storm drain design changes, just making sure that all the design, which had already occurred, they're now updated to the new storm drain design manual requirements. Um, lighting, which is something that um, I never mentioned much of earlier, but um, the initial project did not include lighting. So we slowed things down so that we could make the corridor really complete and safe. And so now lighting has been added. Um, roadway lighting has been added. We're removing the high pressure sodium vapor lighting that's currently there and installing LED lighting. And with that, um, based on the design guidelines, we, we had to install new duct banks to accommodate um, the lighting infrastructure. So some of these are things that have contributed to the project not being as far along as we anticipate. But the overall intent is that the residents along this corridor will have a viable um, result and that there will be satisfaction that we've attained all the goals, both of safety and of beautification of the corridor. So with that, I'd like to pass things back to Stacy, and she can talk about where you can get information. Hi, thank you so much, Neil. Um, so as seen on the screen, and for those of those, those dialing in, I will definitely read this, um, but on the screen, the contact information um, if you have a question or concern, you can definitely reach out to me or the DDOT project manager, Tess. Um, my email address is stacy at tbaconnects.com. That's S-T-A-C-E-E -E at T, B as in boy, A as in apple, connects, C-O-N-N-E-C-T-S dot com. Um, or Tess, and his email address is T E S F A L E M dot A I M at DC dot gov. We also have a uh, DDOT project webpage. Um, it is DDOT dot DC dot gov forward slash page forward slash rehabilitation dash Eastern Eastern dash Avenue dash N E. Um, and so with that, that concludes the presentation.
Um, we will now open up the meeting for our Q&A session. Um, I just want to quickly review some logistics in case um, someone missed them at the beginning. We will be addressing the questions and comments in the order received. Um, you can either leave a, leave a question through the Q&A feature or the hand raise feature. Both are found at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. If you don't immediately see them, you can use the three dots, select those, and then it should have the option to use Q&A or raise hand. If you're dialing in, you would need to press star three on your phone's keypad to raise your hand, um, and the meeting host will unmute you in turn to ask your question. Um, if you're dialing in, please state your name before um, asking your question. Last quick note, um, Neil, if you could go to the next screen. Next slide, I'm sorry. Um, there is a Title VI form that we would really appreciate you uh, completing for us. There's a QR code on the screen for easy access. Just a few quick questions. Um, and if you're dialing in to access that Title VI form, it's rebrand dot ly forward slash eastern av june two two the numbers two two dash comments with an s so thank you very much we'll start the q a um, we've been following the q a section and hand raises so the first question that i have um, received is from alex and the question is, can you say more about the safety improvements to the intersection of Sligo Mill Road and Eastern Avenue? There was just another accident here on Monday evening. Um, I'll, I'll take a stab at that and then um, turn over to the other panelists. But one of the things that um, caused us to implement the traffic signal um at Sligo Mill Road or it's it will be implemented by the end of the year is because of the safety concerns um that we heard from residents so the safety concerns ran the gamut I talked earlier about um the limited sight distance so pedestrians are trying to cross at, Sl at um, Sligo Mill Road but um motorists who are coming up the hill um, don't get a chance to see them. We've installed in pavement signs to help um, give motorists some advance attention that heads are going to be entering the road. But there's evidence that um, those signs have been um, knocked over. So the, the safety improvements, particularly at that location, and, and I don't know which location um, the accident occurred, the crash occurred um, recently. But um, we really are narrowing the roadway. We are shrinking it. And just based on our experience as drivers on, on any roadway, the closer you are to an obstruction, whether it's a jersey barrier or a fence or to the edge of roadway, it helps to, to meter one's speed. So the intent of the, the curb extensions or the bump out, as they're called, um, is really to narrow the roadway, shrink the roadway, calm traffic, and meter speeds down, hopefully to bring them closer back to the posted speed limits of the roadway. So that's one improvement that's being done. Um, it also allows pedestrians to have a shorter crossing distance, so they will not be exposed and in the roadway for as long a time as they are now. And then as far as speeds along the segments beyond um, Sligo Mill Road and just the, the entire segment, particularly between Sligo Mill and Kansas. Um, I've, I've been in the field and I've seen the speeding that's going on there where they've created a de facto two lanes where there should be one lane of travel. So um, the, the pavement markings um, in conjunction with signing that we'll implement along the roadway will also um, move drivers back towards slower speeds. So the narrower the lanes you have, um, the, the slower the speeds um, tend to be. So these are just a few of the, the measures that we're putting in place to, um, to address the, the speeding issue. 
but um, we certainly are aware of it. And this project was actually born out of a safety concern um, that we heard from residents. And this is our, our best attempt yet at um, mitigating those um, safety deficiencies. Okay, thank you so much for that, Neil. Um, and just a quick follow up at the intersection where the accident looks like it was Sligo Mill Road and Eastern Avenue. Um, and I believe you addressed the improvements there. Okay. Um, all right, thank you. The next question I have is from Scott, and it's what is being done to reduce motorist speeds between North Capitol and Kansas? Between North Capitol and Kansas. Um, the, the speed reduction measure, the primary speed reduction measure for, for that segment um, has to do with um, the shrinking of the lanes. But we also are, are introducing bump outs at Kansas Avenue and, and also, I believe, at North Capitol. So on, on either extremity of that segment, um, the, the curb bump out, similar to what we're doing at Sligo Mill Road, will serve to, to meter speeds, to monitor speeds. Um, not monitor, but adjust speeds. Um, also, and, and this is important too, um, we're maintaining parking on the, the north side. So again, in addition to the curb bump out at, at the limits of that segment, there is parking. And the parked vehicles do con, um, constitute uh, uh, an obstacle, you know, right next, an object right next to the traveled way. So um, there are several, several measures that we're taking. Um, we're going to implement um, signing, pavement marking, the curb extensions. And those are, are being implemented with the express intent of reducing speeds. Okay, thank you very much, Neil. The next question I have is from Garrett. Please explain more about this short uh, shared youth path. Use path from the rendering. It looks like ramps to and from it require a ninety degree turn, which does not work at all for people on bikes. Thanks. Okay. Um, the. The shared use path, um, I, I certainly understand that sudden transition over short distance, but um, if you allow me, I, I want to just um, go back to, to where we have an image of that. So bear with me a little so we can talk intelligibly to the concerns you have. Um, let's So there, this this image, and and I'd like the to, to chime in at this point too, but the the image that you were talking about, I may have shown a, a ninety degree, but um, with this rendering, you can see that there is more uh, a taper that moves from the sidewalk into the shared use path. Um, so it tapers off, it's not a 90 degree here. Yeah, if you go up to my presentation, you, you, can, you can see clearly on that better. Okay, Kansas. Yeah. Here it is. Yes, so I believe this is what um, where the yes. concern rests. Yeah, the the so bike lane, the biker straight will go to the shared use bus. Yes. There's no turn for the bikers. It's the turn for the pedestrians who come from sidewalk, and then turn to the uh, shared bus use. Up to the bikers, they will just move directly to the shared use bus, uh, keeping their right uh, side. Yes, um, once the bicyclists. It's on the year share use path. It would continue north and to Capitol Street. It, and you, can you go back one slide? The first slide to show the at North Capitol. And right it's there. Yeah. 
the, the share you pass will end, will end there. However, there's a ramp that allowed the bicyclists to continue along northbound Eastern Avenue. So the bicyclist does not have to make a 90 degree turn. It's continuing. The pedestrian would have to turn to cross Eastern Avenue at North Capitol to continue on the sidewalk. However, the bicyclist does not have to make a, turn, a 90 degree turn. And I just want to add that there will also be signage, both um, pavement markings that show this with the bicycle and the pedestrians would walk or, or ride, as well as signs, signposts that say pedestrians should cross here and the bikes uh, would continue. So there'll be signage as well. Okay, team, is that complete the, anyone else have anything to add before I move on? Okay. All right, next question we have is, um, and I'm sorry if I'm I mispronounce your names throughout this. Um, Chai, sorry if I missed this, but will sidewalks be installed on Eastern Avenue between Kansas and North Capitol? Yes, there will be. So um, you can see we were talking earlier about um, where the bicycles transition onto the shared use path. So you have sidewalk um, shown here in orange heading um, further to the south, farther to the south. And that is new sidewalk. That is six feet wide also. So yes is the answer as you mentioned. It starts from Sligomi Road for the northbound traffic and it goes until midway uh, uh, passing Kansas Avenue. And there from there uh, it joins the shared use bus and then they have to turn left on Kans uh, on North Capital intersection. So yes, we have uh, uh, solved the gap that was there between uh, Sligomi Road and uh, North Capital uh, Street intersection. All right, team, thank you for that. The next question that I have is from Jean. Um, please share what DDOT plans are to minimize vehicular traffic through the Hampshire's community. Uh, our project starts from new uh, from Winter Street and ends in uh, just before the intersection uh, uh, of New Hampshire Avenue. But we have a modification on the traffic signal for the intersection, and of course we have uh, improvement to the ADA ramps. Uh, that is uh, the limit of our project, and that's the the fund we have at this point. But definitely, uh, pro did that takes uh, project by project for uh, uh, fund reasons. So this project limitation is right in the New Hemisphere Avenue uh, intersection. But hopefully, if there was a, there is any issues that uh, has been raised to did that, I believe it is uh, is taken care of. If there was any traffic concerns. But for this uh, intersection, the traffic signal modification is basically to address uh, and uh, use uh, an updated uh, manual design to meet the best possible uh, scenario of uh, mitigating the, the traffic congestion of in that intersection. Thank you, Tess. Um, the next I, just, I just want to say, Jen, if that if that answers your question if if you want a further clarification if you could uh, we could maybe unmute her her and uh, we could get a little more clarification on that to see if that does uh, answer your question okay yes if you uh, need further clarification 
Um, you can raise your hand and that hand raise option is at the bottom. We'll unmute you. Uh, I don't see your hand raised just yet, but if we'll watch for that. And if you do need for further clarification, uh, we'll pay attention and unmute. Next question that we have is from Julie. And I know this is not actually constructed until 2026, but what is the communication with the construction plan for the Met Branch Trail on Blair, including truck slash heavy vehicle disruption and the redesign of Kansas Blair and Peabody? Yeah, I could take care of that one. Um, I'm working on that project as well. That is actually gonna be going to construction this winter. So that work will be completely finished before Eastern Avenue starts. Thank you, John. The next question is from Sandra. And hi, all. It looks like Sligo Mill is a detour route for um, entire construction phases one and two, which I believe is the only road set up that way. We don't currently have sidewalks on Sligo Mill, which is already a huge safety concern for residents. We have families with strollers, pedestrians who have to use the road right now. How long is phase one and two expected to take and have the lack of sidewalks factored into your detour decisions? Uh, let me ask, uh, answer the first question, uh, the, the part about the timing. Uh, the improvement on traffic signals uh, was basically to improve overall traffic uh, uh, flow. But for this traffic intersection, for this intersection, uh, the improvement was to put a new traffic uh, signal so that to, in to decrease the safety concerns that uh, the residents have. But since the project uh, construction phase is a little bit pushed back, we have this interim uh, uh, phase which we say uh, phase one. So in phase one, hopefully will be implemented this year unless there's backlog on uh, any assembly uh, equipment. Uh, and that will be, uh, I believe, huge push to the safety of the intersection. Uh, I, I leave to Neil to discuss the other options, uh, other so with respect to the detour, and um, you, you've made a very um, astute observation that um, for the detours that involve Sligo Mill Road, um, the, the pedestrian facilities are, are lacking and then people use the roadway and, and I'm sure they don't want it, but um, if that's what they do, they do. So we, we looked at viable detour routes and um, we certainly gave consideration to, to pedestrians. And that's kind of why I indicated during that aspect of the presentation that these routes are suggested routes. And before any um, construction phasing maintenance of traffic measure is implemented, um, there will be a, another public meeting the contractor will also be looking at these um, suggested plans and then um, presenting to DDOT and also to the community um, what is deemed viable and safe. Because um, that's, that's ultimately going to be a goal in anything that's done, um, the safety of all. So it's, it's not etched in stone and these are suggested routes and we're balancing um, the safety of all road users, vulnerable road users and um, vehicles, cyclists, and we're balancing that with not having an onerous detour route that puts traffic um, well outside of where they need to go. But all in all, um, this is these are plans and, and they're not etched in stone, the, the detour plans in particular. And so there, there's some room or some opportunity for adjustment as we move forward. Thank you for that. Um, we're going to do one more question in the chat and then I'll, we have a few hand raises, so I'll go there next. Um, Commissioner, you have a question. If construction starts in fiscal year 26, 
when do you anticipate the project will be fully completed? Um, sorry if I just didn't hear this detail in the presentation. The design? Okay, go ahead, Neil. No, no, Tess, I was actually turning that over to you if you could talk yeah. to the, the schedule. So if it means the construction phase, uh, it could be 18 months to two years. Uh, but uh, at this point, uh, we can only uh, talk about the design phase because that's uh, we don't know the circumstances around it when we started. But basically, our, the estimate will be two years from uh, when it starts. But the design phase, of course, as mentioned, it will be completed in July, and we are expecting to complete the interim uh, phase one traffic signal at uh, Sligo Mirror intersection before the end of the year. Hopefully, definitely it will start. Uh, those are where we currently where we are, but tentatively it may, it may take two years to eighteen months to two years. Thank you for that answer. Um, so next we'll jump to hand raises for a few. Um, Garrett, you had your hand raised. Um, I know we asked a question earlier. Is that from earlier? Do you have another question? And Molly, if you could unmute Garrett and again. Um, just want to make sure you can hear me. Yes, we can hear okay. you. Okay, great. Um, thanks so much for the presentation. Uh, my name is Garrett Hennigan from the Washington Area Bicyclist Association. Uh, I'll try to keep this pretty quick. Um, I mean, first off, lo love the buffered sidewalks, love the trees, love the drainage. I think those are all really great things. And I know neighbors around here have been asking for those for a long time. I want to talk about the uh, bike infrastructure. I've heard you say again and again, this is about being multimodal. This is about bringing safety to people who bike and all road users. Um, frankly, I, I need to push back on that because frankly, it, this is just not a very good bike design. I know it's constrained, but the objective thing that we have to look at is what are DC's plans for this area? Um, DC just updated its move DC plan uh, in 2021, designated this street as a priority bicycle corridor. And what that comes along with, what that means is that for a street like like this, an arterial to be uh, in, in the priority bicycle network, it calls for protected bike lanes in a situation like this. And, and instead we see what are, by DC's own standards, by DDOT's own standards, a very high stress bike facility. Um, Sharrows in the uphill direction, shared with 8,000 vehicles a day, um, it, is, is just, it, it doesn't cut it. So, and by the way, Sharrows, you know, depending on the study you look at, have either a, a zero effect for safety or a negative effect for safety. Um, and painted bike lanes are only a small step up from that. So I, I guess I, my question is, in light of what I just shared about DDOT's own plans, how does this project, how does DDOT reconcile that uh, with what is proposed in this project um, as being a, quote, bicycle-friendly design? Um, but that is my question. Okay, thank you for your view. Uh, on the north direction, we only have a shared use for limited from 4th Street to 5th Street. That's the where we have a, a shared use uh, lane. But except that we have all the way a dedicate and once uh, once we before you reach midway uh, north capital intersection we have a shared use pass where uh, we have a limited right of way so when you come to the south direction we have parking lane so the only we have space is 11 feet to 12 feet and we have limited space so there's no way on the south direction to come up with dedicated bike lane within 11 or 12 feet of road widths. So basically, yes, I agree with you. There's challenges here and we have done our best to accommodate, to have, in fact, one of the hot discussion that we have within DDAT is how we can have a dedicated bike lane with the buffer zone, buffer area. and. Uh, we try to make a buffer area in most place for north uh, bound traffic from Kansas Avenue until it is a shared use 
and then from North Capital until Witter Street, it is a dedicated bike with a buffer area. So yes, I agree what you are saying. It is true, but again, we can uh, work with what is available uh, when it comes to right of way. I just want to add that uh, this, this project, so we, we are not widening the road. Um, we keep an existing curb um, location. Uh, the roadway is only 40 feet wide from curb to curb. And uh, in addition to that, you know, we have to provide parkings on the northbound direction. I'm sorry, the southbound direction. That's about eight feet. And then, you know, for the lanes, we can have lane less than 10 feet or 10 feet because of uh, Walmart, a bus. This is a bus route. So we limit on that. So really this concept is we put dedicated bike lane wherever we, where we wherever we can. So, um, but, you know, beside widening the road, we, there's no room to uh, provide dedicated bike lanes in each direction. Uh, well, thank you for your answer. W with respect, while you're saying we cannot, um, it, in fact, what you're saying is we've chosen not to because there is no law, there is no requirement, there is no statute that says that parking is required in front of every home uh, or or that every sidewalk might must be buffered. Um, so respectfully, I, you, you have chosen not to. It is not that you cannot. Uh, thanks very much. Seeing any additional follow up before I move to the next question. All right, thank you for your feedback, Garrett. And we'll move to um, the next hand raise. We had Julie. Um, your hand has been raised uh, for a few, and I noted in the Q and A that you had a couple questions. Um, if we could kind of move to two questions, and I'll come back to you just so those that have not asked any questions, um, we'll be able to come back. But Molly. Can you unmute Julie, please? I, I'm on you. I'm unmuted already. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so I appreciate all of the work that you've done. I live at 6548. So I'm the second house south of North Capitol, and I have a text chain going with a bunch of neighbors who are on also tonight. Um, I really appreciate all the work that's gone into this. Um, and my perception on this is that I would really like to see it keep moving forward and not let perfect be the enemy of the good. Uh, the current situation is not tenable. So all of these improvements are improvements. So I want to start there. Um, my question earlier about interactions with the Met Branch Trail is that we expect truck traffic on Blair to be shifted to Eastern because of the turn at Van Buren. And I wanna make sure that, um, I want this to be a success and, and not uh, run into things. So I just wanna make sure that that uh, communication is really clear on the shift of the traffic patterns that we expect on Blair. Um, I was curious more also about if we could get more into what the lighting is gonna look like and for retaining walls and driveway aprons that would be considered private property, what is DDOT's responsibility for that? What's the property owner's responsibility for that? Um, and my son really wants to know about, um, he's 11, and wants to know about um, any utility conflicts that might disrupt the smooth pavement later on. Um, I know we've got undergrounding for the Pepco wires, and also potential other, we have a lot of water main breaks around here. So uh, what will, what's the communication with the utilities around all of this? And I have a million other questions, but I'll follow up with Stacy offline. Thank Red you. Street light, uh, Neil. Yes, yeah, so the, the, the lighting that will be, um, installed well initially we um were planning on replacing the the lighting arms that are on the the, the pepco poles and just 
tying in from a power standpoint there, but the design now calls for lighting standards, standalone lighting standards, um, fixtures within duct banks, um, the duct, duct banks. Um, it is not pedestrian lighting, it is roadway lighting that will be installed. And because you have um, PEPCO utility poles all around, we certainly have to be aware of the potential for utility conflicts, um, both overhead and on the ground, and minimize that as best we can. And it's not only from, from a PEPCO line standpoint, but you have on the ground gas lines and also balancing where we're installing inlets with where we can install um, lighting poles, lighting standards. So um, that, that's pretty much um, what our lighting design entails. Um, we, we have performed photometric analyses just to make sure that the lighting levels um, meet DDOT's um, standards, um, given the pavement type, pavement surface type, and also um, where we have light reflection all around. And just fitting things within the existing infrastructure that's out there. So um, that, that's it in a nutshell as far as lighting is concerned. We've performed photometric analyses to make sure that there's adequate roadway lighting and we've um, designed for that, as well as um, intersection lighting, just making sure that upstream and downstream of, of each intersection is well lit. When it, let me answer the utility conflict. We have numerous test uh, pits that uh, we have done to ensure the exact location of utilities because one of the challenges was how we can uh, fulfill the uh, clearance requirements of each utility from PEPCO, Washington Gas, DC Water. So uh, to make exactly sure our design can be implemented, we have uh, more than 20 test pits where there's no clear designation on the plans. And we work closely, we are working closely with the PEPCO, DC Water, and Washington Gas with other utilities the, to make sure that uh, we are uh, have the exact location and we also fulfill their clearance requirement. So that you know, we have less conflict during the construction or no conflict at all. Um, I just want to add that it's not shown on these drawings, but there are many, many um, feet of us proposed storm drains that be going under the road and inlets all along here. So um, those will be installed before the final payment section going on top. Okay, thank you team and we'll take 1 more question from the hand raises um, and then jump back to the Q and a, and then we'll, we will return to answer some more um, questions via hand raise. Um, so the next person, John, um, Molly, can you please unmute John so you can ask this question. This is actually Amber John's wife. I'm at the corner of North cap. We're at the corner of North cap and Eastern and currently people run the stop sign all day, every day. And adding a pedestrian crossway to the bus stop that has been proposed to be moved is a great first step. But please share your thoughts on how you can improve safety of pedestrians that will be crossing to the bus stop. And then also for vehicles that are turning onto North Capitol. There are cars that go around stopped cars. There are cars that blow through the intersection at 40 miles an hour. And again, like other people have mentioned, there are people with strollers, there are people with dogs. It's very, very unsafe. So for the southbound uh, direction, uh, we have the crossing on, they have to cross to uh, North Capitol Street and 
and for the northbound traffic, it is after uh, when you come from, yeah, the bus stop, they have two stops, bus stops just on the intersection. So we don't have sidewalk on from uh, North Capitol Street intersection to Whittier Street on the north traffic direction. So the, ba the, 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 the bus is just before the intersection. So that is good safety measure to have that bus stop for north direction in the north direction just before the intersection. So in the south direction also we have the bus just before the intersection. So people will cross from the north uh, to, uh, will cross North Capital Street. So I, I believe this improvement will solve the conflicts you, you're raising. Previously, it was closer to New Street, but now it moved to the intersection of Cap, uh, North Capital Street for the, for the South Bond. So if I, if I can jump in real quick, um, this is John. Uh, when people are going southbound is usually when they, they will, if someone were to be in that, you know, supposedly left lane uh, and they're stopped, a car will go around them and not stop. So right now when I'm seeing it, there's a bus stop there, but if the bus is not there, it's wide open for them to still do that maneuver to either make that right turn or to quickly get around them and go around that island and keep going southbound. So uh, our question is, if we're not going to do a light here, can we get another, you know, uh, landscaped kind of inlet uh, where that bus is and move that bus stop back a little bit or, or whatever uh, to, to get that position where someone can't just blow around a uh, stopped car? Or run the stop completely. If a, there's a pedestrian crossing with flashing lights, you know, anything to help notify vehicles that someone is crossing the road and not to run the stop sign a stop sign camera a light people run the stop sign that is the issue uh neil what's your um, opinion here so 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 there are there are applications um you you did mention like a, a stop sign with LED lighting around to draw attention to motorists. Um, the, 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 the challenge we have, unfortunately, are motorists. Um, so even some of these measures that we, we put in place, um, the, the motorist who has that propensity to, to violate the, the traffic control device will do that regardless unless there is something that physically um, prevents them from doing that. So um, it, it's something that we, we may have to take back to the drawing board. Um, uh, there are no promises at this stage. I know that um, as, as we've mentioned, the project is, is along, you know, far along quite a bit, but with, with your input, your real life experience, um, input there and we certainly will have a discussion among the design team to that end but thank you so much. sure um, thank you very much for your question and thanks team for the answer so um, i just wanted to share we are 15 minutes away from eight o'clock um, i am going to go to um, continue on in the q a for a moment to ask questions and then I'll go back to hand raises. We will fit in as many questions as we can tonight, but please know that if we don't reach your question tonight, you can always reach out to me via email. Um, we'll provide that again before closing out the meeting. So I'll go on to a Q&A question from Sandra. Um, given how long the project is going to take to get started, are there plans to fix the current state of Eastern Avenue, the uneven road between Sligo and Kansas, as well as the lack of road markings above Kansas to the north to North Cap? Are some of the current safety concerns? And I know you touched on that. Um, any follow up for that um, question? And you can go ahead and uh, read yes. your uh, slides. Sure. So, so um, I, I certainly, the, the, the current, um, the existing pavement markings are, are inadequate, but one of the things that has occurred since we started the project is that um, 
because of the, the condition of the roadway, there has been some resurfacing and some restriping along the roadway. So that is certainly a concern that the, the project team can bring back to the table just to see if there are any interim measures that can occur um, prior to the start of construction. So I know that these discussions um, do occur regularly, just looking at projects within the area and then looking at the, the status of the roadway that we are about to improve, we're looking to improve. But um, I don't know that there's anything programmed to, to make some interim changes to the signing and pavement marking along those segments that you've mentioned. If but, I could jump um, in for a moment, Neil. Yes. yes. Um, I what, what what we do when we have projects, we have the utility companies come in and do some work prior to our work being done. Because of the delay in this project, the utility work was done and they just did some uh, interim finishing. They, didn't, mm -hmm. they thought we would be coming in right behind them and be doing a, a full pavement um, reconstruction. But that did not happen. So we actually had already discussions with the utility company to see about having them uh, fix it to a better state of repair. Okay. Thank Thanks. you for the team. Um, next question. Um, please apologies if I don't pronounce this right. Uchina, Uchina. Um, how exactly will DDI be conveying the end of the northbound bike lane? Obviously, drivers will see no bike lane, but it just seems strange to have a bike lane abruptly end and then have bike riders share a lane with cars. And I know you addressed that with Garrett. Any follow up there? Um, Tess, you want to take this? Uh, uh, well, uh, Sorry, can you rephrase the answer to the question, please? Sure. Um, it says, so how exactly will DDOT be conveying the end of the northbound bike lane? Uh, they express that drivers will, not, will see no bike lane, but it just seems strange to have a bike lane abruptly end and then have bike riders share a lane with cars. Okay, the north uh, part is at the beginning of our project here in Wichita Street Northwest. So the dedicated bike lane here will be signed. This uh, planning show, we have uh, some comments and uh, uh, there will be some modification here. There was a uh, waiting area here so that bikers who are turning left to Wichita Street can uh, stop uh, outside uh, this through lane before uh, they turn to Wichita Street. So we expect first, let me say, this project will take, will handle only within this limit uh, project beginning and the end. But what we have proposed here is on Witter Street to have uh, a waiting area whereby cyclists can wait until the, the intersection is clear to turn left. And that is a safe way for them to turn to uh, Witter Street. But at the same time, I would like to stress that within we are working within our project limits. Of course, uh, there might be other uh, projects or the bike lane uh, uh, section handling, um, limiting my response within uh, the project. Yeah. If I might add to what um, Tess has said too, is that um, the, the, the comment was about the bike lane abruptly ending. But we, we are constrained in terms of the roadway with um, right at that segment, you have um, lower Eastern. So there's a retaining wall and there's a drop off. So the, the roadway width is constrained, but it, it will not, it, it appears abrupt, but we will ensure that there are signs, advanced signs leading up to the end of the bike lane that will warn um, bikers of the end the, the impending end of of the bike lane. So um, it, it certainly appears abrupt from the, the concepts we have laid out here, but the, 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 the signing and pavement marking will work in tandem to adequately inform um, bikers that the lane is coming to an end. Thank you for that. Uh, the next question is from Jennifer. 
Is there a plan for a roadway diet slash road narrowing? Um, lower speed limits do not slow cars, but narrow roads are effective. If vision zero is a priority, why are raised crosswalks not part of this plan? Um, is there a plan for protective bike lanes? Um, one of that's been one of those questions has been answered, but um, would the team answer the other questions, please? Okay, um, I, I'll, I'll talk a bit to raised crosswalks. Um, there, there are criteria for implementing raised um, crosswalks. Um, each jurisdiction has its criteria, as does um, the district. So the raised crosswalks, the the width tends to vary between um, 22 feet to 27 feet with a, a running area for pets to cross on um, as wide as 15 feet. So it, it certainly takes up um, quite a bit of real estate and um, placing that in light of where the inlets are, um, the, the criteria really has a constraint with respect to installing raised crosswalks along this corridor. Um, but before we even get to issues of um, obstructing drainage or impacting in pavement manholes and um, gas valves and water valves, before we even get to those design components, um, we have to look on the, the roadway type and the, the volume of traffic that it takes. So um, along, along a minor arterial roadway, um, if the, the ADT, the average daily traffic exceeds 7,500 vehicles, um, that precludes the roadway from being considered for um, a raised crosswalk. Also, if, if it's an, a, a route that um, has quite a bit of truck traffic or has emergency vehicles um, used to access nearby um, hospitals or other emergency facilities, it precludes installing um, raised crosswalks along these roadways. And we certainly looked at um, some of those measures. As a matter of fact, um, during the design development process, we looked at um, um, a, installing a speed table along um, in the vicinity of um, Kansas, Kansas and Eastern. And when we looked at the criteria for installing um, that safety measure or, or speed reduction measure, um, just the, the other criteria that I mentioned, you know, the, the, the volumes, the emergency vehicles, um, with the, the bus route component of it with respect to the speed tables, it precluded installing some of these um, um, speed reduction measures. So um, unfortunately, um, they, they were not tenable for this um, project and for this corridor, um, but we certainly looked at them during the process. Yeah, for on the bike lane, just to add some, we did uh, our best to be able to provide a dedicated bike lane whenever possible. And again, here we need to, I need to mention that we also have safety standard to meet when it comes to roadway with us. This is a road where we have pass in every direction and we have to meet the minimum lane with it with is for buses so we did our best on the north bike uh, north direction where we have some space as related to this uh, the south uh, bound but again uh, space is right of way limitation is here a constraint uh, not to in entertain what really uh, need to implement when it comes to dedicate bike lane with uh, even a buffer area. I just want to, to stress on the constraint we have. Thank you, Tess. Um, so next question uh, is from Suzanne. Will any residential driveways need different grading along Eastern on the Montgomery side? Yeah. Um, I can take that new. Okay. Uh, on the Maryland side, um, because we're putting in new uh, six foot wide sidewalks from uh, Slycos up to uh, 
near the North Capitol. Because of that, we have to um, regrade some of the driveway. Um, what you see in this picture here is, is the the limit that we would, we are anticipating that we have to go back to tie it in the driveway. So yes, the answer is yes. With us, the driveways on the Maryland side, uh, the majority would need to uh, mass mind adjustment to the slope. Thank you. Um, so we're nearing the end of the time, but I will go to a hand raise that's been up. Um, Molly, do you mind unmuting Chai? Hope I pronounced your name right. Sorry about that. So this is Che. Um, hey, all good, Stacey. Thanks. Um, again, I, I also want to um, address. Um, a lot of joy that Eastern Avenue is getting changes. I am in particularly um, just want to plus one, plus two, whatever the want to uplift um, what I think John and Molly said um, earlier about the uh, North Capitol um, stop sign. Um, so I live on the Montgomery County side. Um, on Eastern between Kansas and, um, and North Cap and our side of Eastern does not have sidewalks. And so um, we have to cross Eastern to get to the DC side that has sidewalks. Um, and that's a treacherous um, kind of run <laughs> that, that one has to do both in terms of weekday traffic as well as surprisingly weekend traffic. So. So my question is related to um, why there is no sidewalk being developed on um, the other side of Eastern um, so that pedestrians and, you know, if needed bicyclists can can use um, more of that of that land if needed. Um, so that so that's one question that I had, um, which would there's a lot of families that live on this side of um, Eastern that have strollers and several young um, children. And again, just again, that that corner of North Capitol and turning onto Eastern is incredibly treacherous. Um, so I'm glad that you all are taking it, um, hearing what they're saying and what, you know, trying to look into ways to potentially address that. Um, the running of stop sign on both Eastern and North Capitol is uh, incredibly frequent. Um, and as a pedestrian um, with children, walking that is is uh, nerve wracking. Um, and, and so just wanted to comment that. And then last piece, and maybe you all said this at the very beginning, I joined about 10 minutes late, um, wanted to know why Walnut was not included in this discussion um, of Eastern because Walnut um, is another potential, it, it's, it's another intersection that is incredibly scary for pedestrians. Um, and so I just wanted to add that if, if there's a possibility to look into, you know, kind of the full Eastern um, instead of stopping at Whittier. Over, thank you. Can you answer the what the history of the discussion was in the project regarding this sidewalk on the Maryland side for from North Capital to Whittier Street? Oh, I can I can ask them that right at the be between North Capital and Whittier Street on the northbound direction. That's a steep slope right there, down the embankment, and. Uh, if you put sidewalk along there, you're going to have a, a, a fill slope that's going to come down and cover up Eastern Avenue on the Maryland side. Or there may need to be retaining walls constructs all along there. That was the reason why, you know, we didn't extend the sidewalk down that far. And then at the same time, if you extend it down here, at, when it when you meet Whitter Street, that's where you have vehicle conflicts. So it, it would hard to uh, let pedestrian cross that location. 
but I think mainly because of uh, of the steep embankment um, between North Capitol and Whittier Street in the northbound direction. Regarding the ex the project limit, usually uh, projects are done with a certain limit. On this project, the limit was set on based on previous study to go ahead from Winter Street to to New Hampshire. Uh, did that may have other projects uh, coming, uh, but always the fund is the constraint when we have project uh, limits. And there's major uh, works on this project, like I said on the beginning. We have we are reconstructing the all depths of the pavement, and and that is uh, costly. But again, all in all, the limitation comes uh, uh, how the project developed based on public uh, concerns and uh, funds. As uh, I believe other. If there's additional comments since I jumped to this uh, project lately. Vin, if you have or uh, need, if you have additional uh, briefing on this. No, not, not on what you just said. Um, the, the project limits, as you mentioned, have been established prior. So this is what, what we've been working with all along. Um, and, and we certainly raised the question or, or mused about it um, during the design development process um, because it just ends right there at the, the retaining wall with Eastern on the on the Maryland side. But um, this was the, the limit that had been established by DDOT for the project when we received it. So, Okay, thank you team for the answers. Thank you very much from all the residents and community that asked questions tonight. Uh, we have reached our eight o'clock time, um, but I don't want you to um, be too concerned. We will answer all questions. Uh, so hopefully everyone logged in with their email address. If not, um, and you'd like to be included on the answers, uh, please email me, uh, Stacy at TBA connects.com and maybe Neil, you can go back to that slide uh, with the contact information. And that's spelled S-T-A-C-E-E -E at T-B-A connects.com. Um, that's T as in Tom, B as in boy, A as in Apple, connects with an S. And um, so if you have questions or if you want to just be included on um, a subscriber list and receive the presentation um, or any other information, please email me. If we logged in with your email address, we will um, include the, the answers to the questions that we have and we're not able to get to during Q&A. Um, apologies, Tom did not permit, um, but thank you very much again. Um, team, anything to add before we close out? Uh, thank you so much uh, for coming to this meeting. We really value your inputs and uh, please reach to us. Uh, any questions or comments you have will help us. Uh, so I appreciate all the comments and the views expressed from residents. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you again, everyone. Um, please, we um, wish you and your families good health and a very good night. Thank you for joining us. Again, if you could, Neil, put up the um, the uh, Title VI form with the QCR. Oh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much for that reminder, yes. Um, Neil, can you put the title six up? So the QR code is up on the screen now. Um, if you're able to use your phones just to grab that and complete the title six form for us, another reminder. And if you are dialing in, please go to rebrand.ly forward slash Eastern Ave June, the numbers two, two dash comments.
Thank you very much. It's just a few questions. So if um, you don't mind, please fill out that form for us. And uh, again, thank you everybody for joining. This concludes tonight's meeting. Thank you.